Do you ever feel like a fat f**k and want to lose weight? Well, do I have the product for you. DNP is a banned fat burner that helps you burn fat, but also overpower the body's attempt to maintain thermal homeostasis and cause an uncontrolled, fatal rise in body temperature up to as high as 44 degrees Celsius. What's not to love? Not only can you pull all the baddies with your new Giga Chad body, but if they reject you, you can take a little more and never have to worry about that again permanently. You can get this off shady websites, but I offer you an even better offer. I will show you how to make it as long as you subscribe to my channel and like this video. Now, 2,4-Dinitrophenol is kind of a controversial supplement, and by that I mean it's banned for human consumption in many different countries. Let's take a look at some of the adverse effects. I mean, it can't be that bad, right? Now, DNP works by uncoupling oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria, which is the process cells use to produce energy. Normally, cells produce ATP by transferring electrons through the electron transport chain in mitochondria, creating a proton gradient across the mitochondrial membrane. Now, these protons flow back into the mitochondrial matrix through ATP synthase, driving the synthesis of ATP. Now, what DNP does is it disrupts this process by allowing protons to leak back across the mitochondrial membrane without passing through the ATP synthase. This uncoupling of proton flow from ATP synthase means that energy from electron transport is released as heat instead of being used to produce ATP. To compensate for the loss of ATP, cells increase the rate of fuel oxidation, and usually this is from fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. This heightened metabolic activity leads to increased caloric expenditure and fat loss. The energy that would have been used to produce ATP is dissipated as heat, causing an increase in body temperature. And the body burns more fat and other energy stores to meet its energy demands, contributing to the weight loss. And knowing all this, I just have to make it. The synthesis of 2,4-Dinitrophenol should not be attempted or replicated under any circumstances. I do not encourage the use of DNP as a supplement or for any other purpose. DNP is extremely dangerous and can cause severe harm or death. This information is provided solely for educational purposes, and I strongly advise against any attempt to manufacture, use, or distribute DNP. Safety and well-being should always be the top priority. To get started, I took a 500 milliliter beaker and I put it on a hot plate with a stir bar. We're going to be starting the synthesis off by nitrating bromobenzene. To make this nitration mix, we actually need sulfuric acid and nitric acid. I added 62 milliliters of 98% sulfuric acid. You can see purely by the viscosity that it's a high concentration of sulfuric acid. Now, I thought it would be a good idea to cool this down, as when I add the nitric acid, it's probably going to heat up a little bit. The only unfortunate part is I really didn't have a lot of ice, and I overdid it with the salt, and I kind of just had this weird mixture. I then added 38 milliliters of 68% nitric acid, and fumes were immediately let off when I added it in. I decided to pour this in small segments, but I'm not really sure if that was needed. I also had my makeshift fume hood going, and all the vapors were running into my neighbor's yard, keeping my lungs safe. 30 milliliters of bromobenzene was added to a separatory funnel, so I could drip this in later. It kind of smells like benzene, but slightly more cancerous. It was now time for the nitration, and I had to be very careful about where my temperature resided. I had to make sure that I didn't go above 50 to 55 degrees Celsius as I don't want unwanted side products and the nitration to go out of control. And that means I'd have to restart and I'm not doing that. Immediately upon the bromobenzene touching the nitration mixture, we see a slight orange color being produced. I'll take a guess that it's bromine related, however, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Slightly after the addition of bromobenzene, an off-white solid seemed to form. This made me extremely excited because this should be our product of 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene. With a larger volume of bromobenzene added, we can see a significant color change each time we do that. A couple minutes later, I would then observe a solid to be formed with the orange color disappearing. The mixture would also heat up every so often, and I decided to put it into an ice bath with some fresh ice that I had to get. After all of our bromobenzene was added, we can see a significant portion of this solid circulating in our beaker. It was also an extremely hard solid, and it was pretty hard to break up. 
kind of like Drake and his love for miners. The next step was to raise the temperature to 95 degrees Celsius and keep it there for about two hours. As time went on, it went from these chunks to mashed potato to this oily mixture. As the temperature hit 95 degrees Celsius, I was ready to let it run for about two hours. And you can see by the 95 degrees Celsius, we have these oily droplets that are stirring around. It also apparently likes the sublime, so f this reaction. These droplets actually became more clear as the reaction went on. I also every so often had to scrape all of the sublimation product off the sides of the beaker. Now we should probably go over the mechanism. Now sulfuric acid will actually protonate nitric acid, causing it to lose water and form the nitronium ion. The nitronium ion will then attack the aromatic ring of bromobenzene, where the bromine atom directs the electrophile to the ortho and para positions due to its inductive and resonance effects. Now this will form a sigma complex, I just didn't put it on here. However, the important part is that it will lose a proton to restore aromaticity, which results in the formation of bromonitrobenzene. Now this reaction will go through that same thing again, where the nitronium ion will attack the already nitrated bromobenzene specifically at the remaining ortho or para position relative to the bromine. This results in the formation of a second sigma complex, and the complex undergoes deprotonation to restore aromaticity, resulting in 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene as the final product. Once the reaction was over, I let it cool my lab bench, and it solidified into this giant chunk. I broke it up the best I could, and I put it into an ice bath to further reduce its solubility. I set it for a vacuum filtration so we could collect our product. It filtered a little bit slower as we do have a pretty concentrated acid mixture and the viscosity is a little bit higher. I needed to wash our product so the best decision was to break up the chunks as best as I could before I did the water washings. I used some distilled water so I could wash the product free from any acid remaining. I also tried breaking up the pieces a little bit more so I could wash it a lot easier. The filtrate also crashed out some more after the water washings, however, it really wasn't enough and I threw it out. I then put it back into its original beaker and we're going to do an additional water washing step with some hot water. This was described in the procedure and it's just a way to clean it up a little bit more. So I boiled some water and I poured it on top of the product. With the assistance of a hot plate, it melted it down, I waited for it to solidify and then I refiltered it. It formed into this brick-like structure, and I had to break it up with my spatula. Of course, first, we're going to put it into an ice bath. And it was filtered, just like last time. This should have cleaned up any leftover acid in our product, and we should have a pretty pure product. I also did one more washing step. I don't know if it was really needed, but I did it just in case. It is very, very slightly soluble in water, so I don't want to use too much. It's hard to see on camera, but it was an off-white solid that had a slight yellow tint to it. These chunks were also extremely hard, and it was very hard to break up with my spatula. I also thought it would be a good idea to use the desiccator option on the oven to dry this product. Surprise, it sublimed everywhere in the oven. Really not fun to clean either. 47.18 grams of 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene was a yield, with a percent yield of 62.62%. .62%. It's also probably a little wet, so reduce your expectations. We now need to set up the reaction so we can take off the bromo group and replace that with a hydroxyl group. To do this, I added 50 milliliters of water to a 500 milliliter round bottom bowling flask. The attachment that I had was a glass stopper, a condenser, and a thermometer. I had to wait until the water was 60 degrees Celsius before we added our previous product. Once it was 60 degrees, I added a glass powder funnel and I was ready to go. 36.82 grams of 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene was slowly added in. We now need to heat the reaction mixture to 90 degrees Celsius. Once it reaches 90 degrees Celsius, I'm going to drop a sodium hydroxide solution into the reaction mix. Now, I am supposed to add this over about 30 to 60 minutes, so I can't have the drip rate be too crazy. As our sodium hydroxide solution was dripped in, it slowly started to turn a little bit more orange. It eventually got to this angry red solution that had a slight orange hue to it. When all of the sodium hydroxide solution was gone, I was ready to move on to the next step. All I have to do now is let it react for one hour at 95 to 97 degrees Celsius. 
When I came back, the solution was much more opaque and much more red, with some sublimation on the sides of the reaction flask. I now need to acidify this as it's in its salt form, and I'm going to add 21 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to add the acid at 70 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to do it dropwise. We don't want the temperature to go above 85 degrees Celsius, so this is the reason why I have to add it drop by drop. Eventually, I actually had to add a lot of hydrochloric acid in, as it wasn't acidifying, and the temperature wasn't really raising. Eventually, there was this reddish-brown product in the reaction flask, and I was pretty excited. Now, DNP is actually quite yellow, so this was kind of concerning. I let it stir for about 30 minutes, and then I put it into an ice bath. I was pretty curious to see what I got, so I was pretty anxious to see. I set it for a vacuum filtration, and I eventually got these weird looking rocks of some kind of product that I really can't tell you what it is. I really wasn't expecting chunks, and I was expecting more of a powder. Now, they did look disgusting, and I would never ever want to view them again, however, it did smell kind of nice. I decided to start the washing process to hopefully clean this up, and this was just a little bit of distilled water. I was so curious as to what this was, I actually broke one of them open and I was pushing them around. On the inside, it had this beautiful yellow color and that reminded me of DNP. It might be hard to see on camera, but when you look at the center of this, it's this beautiful yellow color and that really does look like DNP. It just has this nasty side product which could be a dimer which likely formed during the reaction. I wasn't happy with how the product looked so I thought I could clean this up. It did not work and I lost all my product. I'm not going to bore you exactly with what I did, but it just didn't work. So I decided to restart, but using a different procedure. So to do this one, I added 225 milliliters of distilled water into a flask. I then added 21.03 grams of sodium carbonate. This procedure will also put a hydroxyl group on our halogenated position. Now, I also switched to 20.12 grams of 2,4-dinitrochlorobenzene. I actually didn't have enough of the 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene, so I just switched it out to 2,4-dinitrochlorobenzene. Maybe the chemistry gods will forgive me and I'll have a better product. Now, this procedure is much simpler and all we have to do is just reflux for 24 hours straight. The procedure mentions that it will go from this oil-like substance to basically disappearing. I'll know when the reaction is done when none of these oil droplets exist. When the reflux started to go, I set my timer for 24 hours. As the reflux was going, it actually changed color to this orangish yellow color. And as time kept going on and on, it slightly got more opaque. Which kind of worried me as last time I didn't have a good product. I also decided to do a double column as the water pumping through my condenser is going to heat up as there's going to be times where I'm not able to cool it off. A couple hours in, it actually turned to this very dark red mixture that was quite opaque. I could still see some of the oil droplets so I knew the reaction wasn't done. After 24 hours of reflux, it actually significantly lightened and now is a dark red. It's also much more transparent and I don't see any of the oil droplets floating around. My razor sharp intuition said that this reaction worked. We should probably go over what actually happened in this reaction. Sodium carbonate was added to the water which will then disassociate into its respective ions. Which would just be sodium and carbonate. Carbonate can then react with water to create bicarbonate and hydroxide. Now this is in equilibrium, I just forgot to put the other arrow going the other direction. Now, the hydroxide ion can actually act as a strong nucleophile, which will then attack the carbon bonded to the chlorine atom in 2,4-dinitrochlorobenzene. This attack forms a negatively charged intermediate known as the Meisenheimer complex. I don't have it pictured here, but I do have the most important step. To restore aromaticity, this complex undergoes elimination, where the chlorine atom is expelled as a chloride anion. This final result is a replacement of the chlorine atom with a hydroxyl group leading to the formation of 2,4-dinitrophenol. This type of reaction is called a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, and it can demonstrate how sodium carbonate can actually facilitate the transformation of 2,4-dinitrochlorobenzene into DNP. After letting it cool, it actually crashed out this product, which I assumed to be the salt version. I used a glass stir rod to prod around, and it didn't seem to be these hard chunks, but kind of a light powder. 
I had no problem breaking it up, and I could even swirl it around the flask. To get our DNP, we now have to acidify with hydrochloric acid. There was no set amount of how much hydrochloric acid I needed, and I just poured in until everything was acidic. The hydrochloric acid also reacted with excess sodium carbonate, and you can see that we have an evolution of carbon dioxide gas. This is why it looks like it's growing inside the flask and all of these bubbles that are being produced. It was actually expanding at quite an exceptional rate, so I decided to put this into a large beaker. This should make it a lot easier to basically acidify our solution. Seeing the yellow color made me extremely happy as DNP has a yellow color. And I didn't see that disgusting red impurity in my product. Our pH wasn't acidic yet and I had to add more hydrochloric acid. I also washed out my reaction flask with a little bit of hydrochloric acid. You can also see when I pour it in an immediate evolution of CO2 gas. When I finally had it acidified, I set it for vacuum filtration and you can see our beautiful light yellow product. This should be our DNP and it was looking quite pure. Such a beautiful color, however, it's quite a dangerous substance. This used to be sold in health supplement stores until they had to take it off the shelves. I then washed our product to remove any excess acid and or any other products that are soluble in water. I also tried moving everything around with my glass stir rod just to make sure everything got covered with water. And this was done a couple times just to make sure everything was washed. Our yield came out to be 37.80 grams of 2,4-dinitrophenol. Now, this is obviously wet, as if I dry this, it can get kind of dangerous, and it's a uh, quote-unquote high-energy type of substance. So, as for the actual yield, I'm actually not too sure. This is why the percent yield is kind of crazy. And just for an extra safety precaution, I'm going to store it under some water, just to make sure it never goes dry. I thought this synthesis was really fun, and I would probably do it again. However, I really don't have any need for 2,4-dinitrophenol. And also... All yellow chemistry is trash.